The Failure of Just War Theory In this presentation, I will present the main tenets of just war theory and then present an argument for why the theory fails and cannot be used to judge the moral characteristics of war. To understand what we are working with, we should first get a grasp on what is meant by war and what is meant by just. War is rather self-explanatory. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, war is a state of usually open and declared armed hostile conflict between states or nations. Just, on the other hand, is a little less straightforward. According to Merriam-Webster, the quality of being just is defined as having a basis in or conforming to fact or reason. Furthermore, in the context of war and just war theory, the word just is usually meant to describe the quality of being morally defensible or perhaps even morally necessary. In other words, justified. Just war theory is an attempt to bring war under an ethical microscope, to examine war in a moral context. It is used to determine whether going to war is justified and to provide ethical criteria for actions taken during war. Just war theory at its core has the pursuit of peace in mind. However, it acknowledges the fault in humanity and thus seeks justification for war. It puts forth two sets of criteria for a just war. Use ad bellum is the criteria to be used before going to war. Use in bello is the criteria used for acceptable actions during war. Use ad bellum. The criteria for going to war are as follows. Just cause. The reason for going to war must be just, such that is such as in self-defense or humanitarian intervention. Right intention. The nation going to war must have good intentions for doing so, that is, to fight injustice. Fighting for profit or gain is not a right intention. Proper authority. Only the proper officials may declare and wage war. Probability of success. The probability of success in going to war must be reasonable in light of the actions taken. Proportionality. The benefits to achieving an objective in war must be proportional to the costs that may arise in doing so. Last resort. War must be a last resort after other nonviolent means to avoid and resolve conflict have been exhausted. Jus in bello. The criteria for conduct during war are as follows. Discrimination or non-combatant immunity. Force should be used only against enemy combatants and not against innocent people. Conduct in war must obey international laws, such as those for treating prisoners of war or using biological and chemical weapons that are prohibited in warfare. Proportionality. Once again, the actions taken by soldiers in war must be proportional to the expected gain from achieving an objective. Although just war theory puts forth a sensible and respectable argument for conduct before and during war, it fails as an overall theory for judging the moral nature of war. It has several faults, which I will discuss in the following slides, that prevent it from being a useful philosophy in the context of war. Just war theory is not a practical war theory. While it seems like an ideal theory on paper, the practical implications of just war theory are such that nations would never be able to realistically use it in real-world situations. Nations cannot realistically be expected to uphold the principles of just war theory. War is a savage and brutal contest of force, and its participants will not relent or ease up on opponents just because it would be morally right to do so. Simply put, entities at war will do whatever it takes to win. 
the safety of a nation's citizens and the protection of their rights must be maintained even at unjust costs. A nation at war must exhaust all avenues of action to ensure that its ideologies and rights as a nation are upheld. It must protect its citizens from enemies at all costs, even if that means unjust actions must be taken. No one can be expected to put courtesy and morality ahead of their own safety. Similarly, soldiers in war must fight for their survival. Man is inherently selfish. It simply isn't a part of human nature to self-sacrifice in the name of morality. To further complicate matters, terrorists will stop at nothing to inflict evil. Just war theory falls short when enemies don't play by the rules. If a nation were to strictly follow morality, it would put itself at an extreme disadvantage while its opponents gain the upper hand by using unjust means. In fact, the terms just and unjust cannot be used in the context of war if winning is the objective. There must only be actions and reactions. War and Human Nature It is human nature to feel a connection to those who are most like us and to dislike those who are different from us. War requires citizens of a nation to unite over a common enemy. When hatred is the string that binds people together, there is no telling how far they are willing to go to alienate and perhaps even harm those who are different from them. It is not easy to draw a line for hatred. Factors such as wartime propaganda and cultural ideologies create a snowball effect for how we view enemies. As we have, wit as we have witnessed in countless historical examples, this mentality can often lead to a dehumanization of enemies, which in turn leads to indiscriminate killing. Indiscriminate killing can never be justified. War cannot be justified, and there is no use in trying to evaluate it with a moral compass. Additionally, just war theory contradicts itself. It holds peace as its ultimate goal, but seeks justification for violence. Just war theory is a slippery slope. If just war theory declares that a war is just, then the war could conceivably never end. This is analogous to the Christian crusade tradition, in which the assumption of ultimate good, fighting ultimate evil, opened the door for never-ending conflict. The main objective in war should be to resolve conflict as quickly as possible with the least amount of bloodshed. If a nation declares itself on some moral upper ground, such as in the crusades, it would tend to not limit its own use of force. Furthermore, wartime agendas lead to prolonged wars. In the case of resource wars, for example, a nation could meet all the criteria for a just war and thus continue to fight for resources. And when resources are in abundance, there would be no end to the war in sight. Moral high ground leads to, up to prolonged conflict, which in turn leads to unnecessary human deaths which can never be justified. They can never be justified even if the actions taken are considered just under some more arbitrary moral theory. Once again, peace should be the ultimate goal. If violence is met with violence, peace can never be obtained. Even if just war theory tries to defend war, it cannot defend violence. As previously mentioned, War involves the killing of human life, whether innocent or not. Killing is inherently immoral. As such, there can never be a just war. Even if just war theory is used as a moral guide, it is still useless. Just war theory is merely an unobtainable ideal. It looks nice on paper, but could never be put into practice. In fact, it would be hard to argue that there has ever been a just war in history. The imperfect quality of human nature limits the areas in which we can impose moral guidelines. When it comes to something as serious as war and life and death, we cannot be expected to put ourselves in danger in favor of upholding moral values. Morality has no place in war. Just war theory fails. Thank you.